One of the biggest things that I thought the Ravens struggled with last year and really over the past couple of years has been consistent interior pressure from their defensive line. But this offseason, after free agency, after the draft, it seems like they have gotten a whole lot better. But I'm not the best person to tell you why. I brought on a very, very special guest to give you an in-depth breakdown, in-depth analysis of exactly why the Ravens are bigger or better and are stronger on that defensive line. Team, keep it clean. Let's get into it. Yeah, this feels like a dream. And you know just what I mean. You see my boy, he like got to made it. How to made it. Boy, he's a fan and he like the Ravens. Like the Ravens. And you know just what I mean. You too, team, keep it clean. You see my boy, he like got to made it. How to made it. Boy, that's my homie. So team keep it clean we welcome a very very special guest not the first time or the last time that he's been on the channel it's coach aka sip to tally uh we appreciate you coming on first before we get into it let everybody know where they can find you at the twitter the youtube all that good stuff on twitter it's coach evans nine youtube it's sip to tally films okay cool and 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 what do you do on your channel for those who don't know for the most part, it's film breakdown. So finding some aspect of the Ravens game, whether it be um, the run game, the pass game. And I recently, you know, finished a thing with who's at, who's at fault for all the uh, Lamar sacks. So just anything film related. And then in the off season, I do draft videos. All right, perfect. So that's your go-to for all of that stuff. Because with Ravens YouTube, you're going to be covered one way or another. So he got you on all your film, your breakdowns, your detailed breakdowns. So shout out to Coach and appreciate you coming on. Now, um, we are officially out uh, of draft season. The draft is coming and going. Um, but how do you feel as a whole? How do you feel about the Ravens draft this year? Initially, you know, while it was going on, I, I wasn't, you know, too happy. Mm. But once I sat back and thought about all the holes that were filled, mm. I, I really think it was a pretty good draft. Because when you think about it in, in, in totality, you got the, probably the number one safety, mm -hmm. the number one center, the number two or three is depending on who you talk to, a uh, defensive lineman, well, interior defensive lineman. And you got a, maybe before the injury, a top five edge guy in your first four picks. And then you just field holes with a lot of the other stuff with the exception of, you know, the glaring hole. But uh, as overall, as far as value, I think he did a great, great draft. But as far as, you know, making a hole bigger and not feeling it, I was disappointed in that. But we did bring yeah. in some UDFAs, but, you know, you never know with those guys. Right, exactly. That's a really, really good point. Now, out of the draft picks that the Ravens selected, which one was your favorite? Uh, my favorite was Travis Jones. It was Travis Jones. And mm. the reason being, him being picked does a, does a lot of things. It gets you younger at the interior D-line. It gets you more athletic at the interior D-line. And it brings you, um, it brings a guy that can keep whoever wins the inside linebacker job, kind of keep them free. Because we don't have spring chickens there, so they need guys to, to take up doubles so they can run around. Mm, okay, okay. Now, how, how does uh, Travis Jones really complement this defense? How does he complement the guys that will be around him, like a Calais Campbell, like a Matt Abike, like a Michael Pierce? Mm -hmm. What does he bring to uh, this Ravens defensive line? You know, when you with defensive linemen, there's a ton of switching, like every three, four, five plays. And the small quarterbacks wait till you know a defensive lineman try to sub them in and out and take that quick five yards. But when you look at Travis, Travis wasn't he was the guy at Tennessee. He played 70 to 80 percent of the snaps, so there wasn't a lot of three plays and run him out, three plays and run him out. He would play every down, whether it be pass rush, you know, well, not pass rush, passing downs or or run downs. Mm -hmm. He was in there. The only time he came out was like when he was tired, tired, and when he came out, other teams ran on Connecticut, you know, with, with ease. So he, he can bring run, playing the run, but also get you some interior pass rush if he happens to be in there on a uh, pass rushing down. He, he, he'll learn a lot from Pierce. I think having Pierce in front of him and playing kind of the same position and I'm going to say they same, have the same body style because Jones – Jones is 325, but he doesn't look like he's over 275. He mm -hmm. kind of puts you, and dare I say, in the, the body frame of a younger Aaron Donald. I'm not saying he's going to have that production, but mm -hmm. he does, Aaron Donald doesn't look as big as he is. 
Aaron Donald got a six pack, you know, massive arms. He don't got over 300 pounds. <laughs> So Travis Jones kind of puts you in that mind frame of a guy that can sit there in the zero and the one technique and potentially get good and not saying get like Aaron Donald, but potentially be good, especially learning from Pierce and Campbell. Mm -hmm. And I see, I see a rotation of um, Pierce, Campbell, and then maybe, you know, when you get in past situations, bringing in Travis Jones and Matt Abike, and you get, you know, guys that can still play the run, but are more, more useful that can get after mm -hmm. the passer too. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense, especially um, with Calais being an older guy, Michael Pierce, not necessarily being older, but uh, we'll, we'll see how he fits in this year. Now, how, how do you feel about um, the just the defensive line overall right now uh, heading into the season? We know some things could still happen here and there, but how do you feel about this group of guys right here right now? Uh, those <clears throat> those four guys I really like. And if you add in Wolf, I don't, don't know how, oh, how, yeah. how strong or how much he'll be able to give coming off that surgery. But you look at five, those five guys that I really like playing those interior three positions. But then we go to the edge. You look at um, uh, Tyus coming back from injury. I hope I hope he can play at the level he was at before he got hurt. Mm -hmm. you look at Owe on the other side. Uh, I'm really excited to see what Dalen Hayes can do. You still got still got pressure, Daddy Ferguson. So you know, it's, I think it's either come on and produce or you out of here after this year for Ferguson. Yeah, yeah, and um. I can see a an, an older guy coming back, maybe somebody I missed. Um Justin Houston. Houston. Pro Houston. Probably. It's not official yet, but mm -hmm. most likely. But then a job will coming in that fold in like October, November, I think turns that that um that defensive in front seven turn them up. Because if we can get guys in passing down, you got two young go getters on the edge that can maybe get out the quarterback. And mm -hmm. Then you can maybe come in with Jones and Matter BK to give you some interior push also. So I'm liking what I'm seeing from the defensive front. But when you um factor in inexperience, that's where it's going the older guys will kind of have to play maybe a little bit more early in the year. Mm -hmm. Then maybe tail off toward the middle, let them bodies healed up. And then you could play Calais and 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 um Pierce a lot more when that playoff time comes. Mm. Okay, yeah, that's a good point about the inexperience because it is uh, a lot of youth there. But we do, again, have some veterans, like you mentioned, with a Calais and, and a Michael Pierce. So that'll help sort of balance it out. Now, I remember draft night. It was about pick 12. I'm like, okay, right. Jordan Davis still sitting there. It's looking like it. Um, and then pick 13 rolled around. It's like, hold up, Eagles, they, they're not going to get no – oh, because they traded up, as a matter of fact. Mm -hmm. I'm like, no, nah, they're they not getting no Jordan Davis. They they got Fletcher Cox, whatnot. But then the pick came around and said, Eagles, they selected Jordan Davis. So I guess they, they just knew. They knew. Uh, if Ravens had an opportunity to grab Jordan Davis, that the Ravens would have done it. Uh, but if, with Kyle Hamilton there, too, that would have been a toss-up. But how do you compare the two, um, Jordan Davis and Travis Jones? And do you feel like the Ravens got the the better one? Or do you feel like the Ravens, they, they made out pretty good with Travis Jones compared to Jordan Davis or what? Mm -hmm. As far as the better one, that's a toss-up mm -hmm. because – you no, know, Jordan played in the SEC, didn't play nearly as many snaps as as uh, Jones, and had a lot more talent around him. Now, I will say both of them probably were the guy the offensive coordinators game plan for the most. Because definitely, you know, with with Jordan, you had you had the game plan for him, but you had other guys that could make plays. Mm -hmm. But on Travis, you that was the guy, and you know anybody else you can kind of get by. So with the durability, not durability, with the uh, stamina and stuff like that and with the, where we picked them at in round three i think the ravens got the better deal maybe not the best player in season one mm -hmm. but for as, as far as having gonna have a better career because i don't think um jones has a weight issue we all know davis has a weight issue uh maybe the nfl will fix that you know we yeah. can have him full-time nutrition and all that kind of stuff mm -hmm. but he fluctuating his weight a lot so i think the ravens got the better pro and the better value because in my opinion he was the number two with straight up zero technique like lining straight up over the center he was mm -hmm. the second best guy behind jordan but i still i'm i'm happy with where the ravens got him mm -hmm. and his type of production and i really like the fact that he played all those snaps in college so he's not gonna be he's not gonna probably not gonna come out looking like Traylon burks did yesterday oh man yeah he couldn't even finish the practice um <laughs> um 
Man, you just done threw me all the way <laughs> off with that one, man. Oh, <laughs> oh, uh, and, and just to sort of segue to what I assumed you were talking about the offense. Mm-hmm. Um, talked about the draft, how they they fit a lot of holes uh, on the team with the draft, but they created a bigger hole uh, than what was previously there, and they didn't really address it in the draft. Um, I assume that you're talking about the wide receivers. True. Um, and you know, you know, that's a conversation that I'd I love to have on here all day, every day. Um, and apparently the Ravens, they like some of the top guys uh, and they wanted some of the top guys, but all those top guys, they end up getting gone. Mm-hmm. Uh, so one thing that I do appreciate about it is that the Ravens, they didn't settle um, and they didn't just, oh, you know what? We'll just, we'll just take this guy receiver. Um, Cause sometimes it seems like that's what they may do. Mm-hmm. Um, but how do you feel about the Ravens about the best way that they should address wide receiver at this point moving forward? Because free agency is limited options. Mm-hmm. You could go for a trade, but are you really willing to give that up? Um, or you could go with the guys that you got right now, but then there's a lot of inexperience. But w- what do you feel is the best option for the Ravens to take when it comes to their wide receivers? It's, and you mean with this squad that we have right now, right? Right here, right now. Mm-hmm. The best thing, I really like the fact they brought in bigger bodies with those UDF A's. So that means they talk, I think they were targeting a bigger body uh, receiver. Mm. So that takes guys like Jahan, Jahan Watson, even the guy they rumored that they were going to pick. I think that kind of takes him out. I think that was just, I don't think they was going to pick that guy because they were all looking for big receivers. So um, going forward, I really like Prochet to be the slot guy. I think Prochet can, can step up and have a, a, a 40, 50, maybe even 60 catch year and and be and be a chain mover for us. Uh because Prochet can really run routes. He he wasn't a, you know, everybody talk about his drop percentage in, in college and whatnot, but he didn't just run bubbles and and screens and and slants. Prochet ran the whole route tree, which oh. is, you know, that's kind of the opposite of Duvernay. Duvernay has the his lightning, has long speed. Uh, he can maybe break some tackles. He don't really have a lot of wiggle. Man. But Duvernay ran a lot of slants, screens, and deep balls. So he, his route tree ain't as defined as Prochet. Prochet can get in there and, and work in and out. Uh, he's tough. You know, once he catches the ball, ain't no going down. You know, no shade to somebody else. But then you look at outside, Bateman. Bateman's going to have every opportunity to, to produce as the number one guy. And what mm-hmm. I see from Bateman is you can get – you get a mixture of a smaller guy, and you also get some of that up top ability of a bigger guy. As we all saw, what you know, the stuff he used to do to Marlon in practice. So you, you got a guy that can just grow up and be number one, and now you just need to put compliments around it. What I would like for them to do, there's only one free agent that I would say bring in to make the entire room grow, and that would be Julio. Mm. You know, every, everybody wanted Jarvis. I personally didn't want Jarvis because, and not because Jarvis is not a great player. Mm-hmm. I think we have that body style in the room in Proche and mm-hmm. Duvernay and Wallace. Now, mm-hmm. Lenny would be better than those guys, but I think in order for us to take the next step, we need Bateman on one side, another 6'2, 6'3 guy on the other side that can potentially threaten down the field so you can't just load up in the box. Mm-hmm. Now, being in them spread sets don't necessarily mean you're going to throw it 75 times. You just need to some kind of way get teams to too high. And if you got two threats outside where they got to have a safety over top of both their corners, your run game will just expand. So we need a guy that can can push it down the field and be a possession guy kind of at the same time, which I think is what Bateman is. And I think unless you find a guy that can just straight up blaze to replace Hollywood speed, Julio will be your perfect guy. And I don't know if it's anybody else out there that just can burn like Hollywood. Mm. Um, yeah, Julio would be an interesting pickup. How, how would you feel? Because you, you talked about burn like Hollywood. How would you feel about Will Fuller? Will Fuller, I think that would be the settle again. Mm-hmm. I'm not saying it wouldn't fit, but I think that would be the settle. Like you, because when you mentioned that a minute ago, I was like, that's the perfect word, word for what the Ravens used to do at receiver. We'll mm-hmm. just let everybody let the big dogs go, then we'll take what the what scraps left over that we can get, you know, with the change <laughs> we got. So I, I think they used to settle a lot at receiver. But now I think going forward, and it ain't much they can do this year. Going forward, they're gonna try to be more aggressive because they uh, the Costa has drafted what four receivers already. 
Yeah, Bateman Hollywood, Duvernay Proche. Oh, and, and oh, Hollywood wow. and um and, yeah, Wallace okay. and Hollywood and um Hollywood oh, and Boykin. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so that's six. In three years, he drafted six guys. So and he only hit on we would say he hit on Hollywood. Mm -hmm. Um Proche and 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 um Wallace was yet to be determined. Uh Boykin, I think he kind of missed out on. Mm -hmm. So one out of six ain't ain't bad, but it needs to get better because they got to have a passing game in order to win the whole thing. Mm -hmm. That's true. Agree one thousand percent. All right. So appreciate you uh, coming on and dropping your knowledge. Um, y'all make sure y'all check out those the the blame game videos from Coach. Really, just everything from him as a whole. Subscribe to his YouTube channel. I will have that down below in the description just to make it easier for y'all. I'll even put it up in the cards. I don't know if it's on this side or it's on that side, but it'll <laughs> pop up at some time during the video. Uh, so I appreciate you coming on. Thank you again. Let everybody know where to find you at, even though it'll be in the description. Let them know anyway, because some people are they they, they got to hear it verbally too. Yeah. <laughs> uh, on Twitter, it's Coach Evans Nine. On YouTube, it's Sip the Tally Films. I also have um, Instagram, that's Sip the Tally, and I have. That's it. A Facebook something that's simple tell also. <laughs> all right, cool. Sounds good. So we'll have all of that in the description. And y'all can search for it if it's for yourselves if you want to just make it a little more fun. But I appreciate you coming on. Thank you for uh spending a uh, part of your Monday with us and team keep it clean. And we out. Appreciate you.